Welcome to Micron's Hardware. In this video, I'm going to tell you about my testing of Machinist X99K9 version 2. This motherboard I have already tested on my channel, thus if you are interested to see more detailed technical specification and more detailed technical tests, please welcome to watch my previous video. In this video, I'm going to cover the difference between version 1 and version 2. Let's get started with the technical specification. The motherboard doesn't change from the version 1, thus if you need technical specification, just put the video on pause or, as I said, watch my previous video to understand all the technical details. For now, though, I will mention that Machinist X99K9 is the last M80X motherboard from AliExpress, which still uses X99 or C612 chipset. Thus, the motherboard technically has possibility to overclock, unlock the Xeon E5 and Core i7 CPUs. That's why the motherboard is usually costing more than the other cheaper alternatives such as Machinist X99 RS9 with a desktop chipset, for example, B85. Unfortunately, X99K9 still uses the same pathetic 3-phase VRM as you can find on X99 RS9 or Huanangju X99 ATEMF. The previous version of Machinist X99K9 had a few serious flaws, one of which was non-working SmartFine function. Thus, with this in mind, let's start testing and take a look if SmartFan is actually fixed. As it turns out, in version 2, SmartFan on X99K9 actually works, but it works as long as you don't put your computer to sleep. Even though the sleep mode is working as well, once you wake up your computer or restore your computer from the sleep mode, the SmartFan settings are gone. Your fan is no longer working according to your settings, and to get the settings back in play, you need to restart your computer. I don't know if it counts that sleep mode works or smart fan works, but we have such thing, so smart fan and sleep mode are kinda working and not working at the same time. The second major difference and major problem of the version 2 compared to version 1 is the bias chip. On the version 1 motherboard, they have used the standard SOP8 wing bond bias chip soldered onto the motherboard. In version 2, for some stupid reason, they have decided to solder a socketed bias chip straight onto the motherboard. And even though I have figured out how to connect the bias chip without desoldering it into my programmer, I was not able to read it or write it. I even bought a more expensive TL866 programmer to be able to read or write this bias chip, but this one also didn't recognize. Thus, the bias chip is not compatible with CH341A and also not compatible with a more expensive TL866 programmer. After this discovery, I decided to talk to BIOS I engineer and ask for some help. And he told me that he managed to break a few of these BIOS chips and figured out that these Winbond BIOS chips are actually not Winbond. These are some kind of a fake chips or local Chinese invention or local Chinese development. The BIOS chips are marked as Winbond, they work like Winbond, but to read or write them you need some different set of instructions and they are simply not compatible with the standard programmers. It is a shame because the BIOS is also locked and you cannot use FPT, you can only use AFWIN. But there is also good news. The motherboard is fully compatible with the BIOS from iEngineer for Machinist X99Z version 102. This BIOS gives you possibility to adjust your memory timings and overclock your CPU and also fixes some other issues. But as always, when you flash a BIOS using software, there is a risk to break your motherboard. And in case of Machinist X99K9, if you break your motherboard, you will have to physically desolder the BIOS chip and replace it with something else. Other than that, everything else on K9 version 2 works exactly the same on K9 version 1. On the version 2, you will find an unknown LED indicator, which is supposed to indicate NVMe SSD load. I don't know why Chinese decided to add it, but the motherboard is white and it looks pretty nice. Nice. It is not possible to enable or disable this blinking, it just goes on and on, on its own. The same as version 1, version 2 has very long booting and rebooting time, while the power consumption sensors are simply not working. The readings provided by the sensors are completely misleading and saying that the CPU is consuming less than 20 watt of electricity. A much bigger problem I was able to discover is compatibility with four memory modules. I had four sticks, 8GB each, Samsung DDR4 2133 ECC registered memory module. I have installed this memory and tested the motherboard, everything was fine, until I tried to reboot my computer and the system didn't boot. 
Then I tried to power it off and on and sometimes it boots, sometimes it doesn't boot and I was completely clueless of what's going on. I have tested each memory module individually, I have tested each memory slot individually and everything was working fine, but as soon as I install four memory modules, the motherboard every now and then just refuses to start. If I use only three memory modules, motherboard starts 10 times out of 10 tries. And it doesn't matter which three memory slots I'm using, as long as it's only three memory modules, it starts always. But as soon as I install four memory modules, sometimes it starts, sometimes it doesn't start. After this discovery, I turned to BIOS I engineer for some help, and he told me that Machinist X99Z version 102 and Machinist X99K9 have some sort of a defect in the power system for the memory. To check this theory, I have retested with my G-Skill DDR4-3200 memory modules, which are not ECC registered, and using these four modules, my motherboard Machinist X99K9 was starting every time. That's pretty much everything I can tell about Machinist X99K9 version 2, but due to high demand, I have decided to assemble a computer based on this motherboard with the i7-5820K and tell you my experience. Why I decided to go with i7-5820K is because I have three of these CPUs and I have no idea what to do with them. Installing these CPUs on expensive x99 motherboards makes little sense, and installing them on the cheapest motherboards with the desktop chipset also makes no sense, because you cannot overclock these i7s with the B85 chipset. For the graphics card, I went with the AMD RX Vega 64. The graphics card was picked for me by the Discord community. Other options were GTX 1650 and GTX 1660. For the memory, I wanted to go with 32 gigs in 4 memory channels configuration, but as I have mentioned already, X99K9 refused to work with my 4 memory modules, so thus I had to limit myself to just 2, 2 by 8, 16 gigs. For the storage, I'm going to use cheap Kingston SSD for 500 gigabytes. For the CPU cooling, I plan to use my 120mm all-in-one liquid cooler from China, which I made video about, but I have got only one unit left and this unit seems to be defective. When I plug it in, the pump is making very annoying high pitch sound. Also, the mounting brackets are somehow banded or defective and the mounting pressure is not enough to cool down my i7-5820K once it's overclocked. Thus, I looked onto my shelves and found a CPU cooler which was lying there for ages and I could not figure out what to use it for. It happened to be c Lentium PC Feta 3. This is a semi-decent CPU cooler and I have added another 120mm fan onto it to increase the cooling capacity. Overclocked i7-5820K will consume quite some power, and RX Vega 64 also consumes lots of power. Thus I need a powerful power supply, but at the same time I need to stay within somehow reasonable budget. That's why I have decided to go with Corsair CX750M. This power supply I picked up for just 60 euros, and I believe it is a very good price for 750 watt power supply with a semi-decent or pretty decent characteristics. All of these components are gonna be installed into a white chassis from Deepcool Macube 110. Why I decided to go for the white chassis? Well, obviously because Machinist X99K9 is white and I wanted to have a white themed build. To complete the build, I add three RGB fans that I have received from China together with that all-in-one liquid cooler and 40mm Noctua fan to cool down the VRM. This Noctua fan costed me 20 euros, which is rather expensive, but it was the only 40mm fan that I could find on my hands at the moment. All in all, the build is gonna cost about 820 euros, which is rather a lot for a Chinese X99 based build. These prices I have specified are the prices that I have paid for the different components, and in your cases the price might be higher or lower, that's why it is very important to do your own calculations and evaluations and see which kind of components are making most sense for you and what kind of build will provide you the best value. Let's start with overclocking first. My Core i7-5820K I was able to push up to 4.3 GHz on all 6 cores. To make this stable I had to increase voltage by 110 mV, and the CPU voltage under heavy load stays somewhere around 1.14 V. Uncore frequency I was able to push up to 3.5 GHz and the uncore voltage was up by 100 mV. Memory was overclocked to DDR4-2400 and the timings were tightened to CL14. Unfortunately, Machinist X99K9 does not have any regulations for memory voltage, that's why I was not able to tighten memory timings even further. DDR4-2400 is already not bad for cheap Samsung DDR4-2133 modules. 
I have also applied power limit of 17 watts for my i7-5820K. Of course, 17 watt is an artificial value because X99K9 provides misleading and wrong power consumption readings. This limitation is necessary to reduce the power consumption by the CPU, otherwise the CPU consumes more than 200 watt from the wall, CPU overheats and VRM overheats as well. Nevertheless, even with this limitation, my i7 was able to keep 4.3 GHz on all 6 cores under heavy stress, and of course in games it was running 4.3 GHz on all cores as well. Now, having experience building entire computer based on X99K9 and i7-5820K, what can I say? Did I enjoy this build or no? Absolutely not. This build was one of the worst builds I have ever produced, and let me explain why. First, system tuning is a nightmare. Machinist X99K9 takes lots of time to boot and reboot. For example, if you have applied some sort of an overclock and then you are running ADA64 stress test and the ADA64 stress test reports a hardware failure, you need to restart. In this case, Windows to Windows restart will take you 57 seconds, which is almost a minute. Thus, when you are tuning your system to the best possible performance, you end up sitting and staring at a black screen one minute and one minute and one minute and again and again and again until you actually figure out what are the best options for your CPU and for your memory. It is very frustrating and very time consuming. Adding more to that, X99K9 does not have any options to store BIOS options in a file and then restore it back from the file. This would simplify the things a lot, but we don't have this feature. Of course, you can make a customized BIOS and baked in all the settings into the BIOS, so when you restore defaults, all your values will be restored automatically, but first you need to figure out what are those the best values which you would want to have baked into your BIOS. And finally, the motherboard does not restore the last known working configuration of the BIOS. For example, if you're trying to get your memory timings too tight or you're pushing your i7 a bit too much and the system fails to boot, you have to clear CMOS and reconfigure the BIOS all over again. This is extremely frustrating. The motherboard simply doesn't start and that's it. Implementing system cooling was not any better. First of all, on X99K9 you have only two fan headers. The first one is 4-pin CPU fan header and the second one is a 3-pin system fan header. This 3-pin system fan header does not have any options to regulate the rotation speed of the fans and the fans are rotating at 100 speed. Thus, if you connect there a fan, your computer is sounding like a helicopter which is trying to take off. In my case, I had to connect all of my fans straight to the power supply using different adapters. Only the CPU fans were connected to the CPU fan header. This might have been a small issue if motherboard VRM would not be overheating. It would be very nice to be able to control the speed of a VRM cooling fan according to the VRM temperature or at least according to the CPU temperature. But in the current configuration it's simply not possible and my Noctua 40mm fan is blowing air onto the VRM zone at a constant speed. Finally, let's talk about aesthetics. Machinist X99K9 is a nice looking white motherboard, but it is very small, and originally I planned to use it with my water cooling, which means the motherboard would be visible. But under a big tower cooler such as Cicillentium PC Feta 3 with an extra fan, the motherboard is almost invisible. So my Dwight Theme PC build idea didn't really work out. Second, the motherboard has some sort of a backlight and the NVMe SSD load light. These two lights are not possible to turn off, it's not possible to configure them. And if you would like to have some nice looking RGB lights according to your room theme or according to your mood, you can't do that because these lights might be spoiling everything. Of course, someone who is not picky will just say, ah, don't bother about it. Now let's talk about the performance. Overclocked i7-5820K at 4.3 GHz is providing about the same level as Xeon i5-2640 V3 when all CPU cores are used. With a single CPU core, of course, i7 is gonna go on top because 6 cores equal 8 cores means single core is better. But it comes at a cost of the power consumption. i7-5820K overclocked consumes more than 220 watts of electricity, while Xeon i5-2640V3 consumes somewhere around 160 watts when I was testing with Blender Benchmark. You are the one to decide if i7 is worth it and if you want to go through this overclocking struggle or you just buy a cheap Xeon i5-2640V3 and enjoy the system as is.
About the gaming performance, I will talk in another video where I will compare this overclocked i7-5820K to 4.3 GHz to Intel Core i3-10100F. For now, let's make a conclusion about Machinist X99K9. At the moment, you can buy this motherboard from AliExpress for about 80 90 100 euros, and I believe that it is completely overpriced. Even though the motherboard has quad memory channel support, X99 or C612 chipset, I still think that 80 90 100 euros is way too much. The motherboard comes with some severe flaws. Original BIOS is pathetic and you need to flush BIOS from iEngineer. Still flushing the BIOS, you are risking to break your motherboard. If the motherboard breaks, you cannot restore it, because Chinese use some sort of a fake BIOS chip, which is not compatible with CH341A and also not compatible with a much more expensive programmer TL866. More to that, the motherboard may refuse to start with four memory modules. Also, sleep mode is working, but it restores the smart fan configuration, so smart fan is kind of working, sleep mode is kind of working, but when they are combined together, they are kind of not working. And there are a few extra small things to complain about, but at this point, I think it is pointless to discuss it. At 100 euros, simply don't buy this motherboard. If it would cost 50, 60 euros, maybe we can think about it. But at the moment, I would just recommend to go with the cheapest Machinist X99 RS9 and Xeon i5 2640V3. With this, thanks for watching, thanks for listening, I hope it was interesting. Bye bye.